kill yourself. Happy Monday, folks. Woohoo! I hope you've had a lovely Monday. Welcome back to another episode of the 50% Doctor Who podcast where we talk about, you guessed it, <laughs> Doctor Who, uh, 50% of the time. Um, uh, does anyone want to talk about that show anymore? No, we don't. Um, if you are here, thank you for sticking around, folks. We had a good run through the new era of Doctor Who. We had a good run and now we're done. And now we're done. So now we're back to 10% of the views that we had yeah. during the, the new episodes. Oh, yeah. That's fine, man. That's where we thrive. That's where we get the most unhinged. We get yes. silly. We get uncut. We get crazy, mate. Mm, I've missed it. I've missed, um, missed it. that seriousness of uh, that. Sorry, unseriousness of doing the reviews. Yeah, quite frankly, because if you're new, you would know us from being. I mean, I feel like when we say we were relatively on topic doing reviews, we're still us. So we're still relatively not good at that, but. <laughs> Uh, but I guess now we get a little bit more loosey goosey. We still talk about Doctor Who most of the time, but you know we just get a little bit, a little bit silly. So if you're here, you're kind of fed up with a hundred percent Doctor Who talk, and you just kind of want say fifty percent Doctor Who talk. We we'll, we will, I promise you, at least deliver on that. Oh, at least 50%. shade at other shows. What? Nah, you're because you said if you're sick of people talking a hundred percent of it. No, I just mean like like oh, I get like, like I general? get sick of talking about Doctor Who all the time. Oh, same. Um, so that's okay though. Maybe you're sick of listening to Doctor Who all the time. I like coming here. This part yeah, I'm enjoying. Man. This is a good shit, right? I enjoy like, and I like being creative, so I enjoy talking. Mm. Um, but mm. yeah, mm. start the the show off with a little sound bite today. Um, we love the soundboard. Me dog. Fucking Costa. Oh, you on, got a new one, you're saying? I don't, but okay. what I wanted to say is we've obviously had a whole new season of Doctor Who come out since we updated the soundboard. So if you guys have specific sounds that you want to hear on the soundboard, <laughs> either comment them below or send them uh, to me via email, greeny, who at gmail.com. It's, it's in the description, isn't it, your email? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Gre- greeny.who <laughs> at gmail.com. That's greeny, the color green with a Y. How do who. people get it then? I know people send you emails. Oh, I think you can find it, it somewhere. I've got it right. linked somewhere. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is in the description. I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere. Maybe it's on the link it tree. It might be somewhere know. or you can... Oh, probably it's on the link tree, yeah. But yeah, uh, send us or let us know what you want here because we've been using a lot of the same bloody sounds lately. <laughs> so let's shake it up, shall we? Yeah, send Aiden emails. Don't send me um, Facebook friend requests because I will not accept it. That did happen last week. Connor's a bit sad. I mean that with peace and love. I was like, I don't want friends. No, I just, it freaked me out a little bit. Yeah, I don't okay. think they'll try and be weird, mm. but I don't know who it was. Can I add you there was as a tons friend? Of Doctor, we are friends on Facebook. I There's made your Facebook Doctor account. Who. Yeah, we did. We were watching Miracle Day when it happened. We were watching Miracle Day we and I made Miracle your Day. Facebook account. Watching Miracle Day. That was the wow. first time and last time I watched it. But yeah, wow. please don't send me Facebook friend requests. I will not answer it. Uh, but yeah, send Aiden, send Aiden as many emails. <laughs> send me whatever you, you like, guys. I'll, I'll there and happily not there's, reply. There's literally like there's 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 the show social medias for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm even considering private in my own personal account because you're that fucking famous, mate. No, it's not that. It's <laughs> it kind of sounds like I'm trying to be like that, but it's not that. It sounds like that. If you see me on the streets, that. don't talk to me. Don't That's even say. don't even look at me. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at it, and uh, don't <laughs> blink. Uh, guys, we've got some hot goss coming up in just a Woo-hoo! second. The latest Docky Who news that you might not know about yet. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 50 Doctor, on TikTok at 50 Doctor Who. Follow them. Subscribe. Yeah, message them. Message Subscribe them. if you haven't already. Give us a five star review or give us some kind of lovely rating on Apple Podcasts. And we got a Kofi as well down below if you want to give back to the show. Um, Someone did. I, yeah, I was going to say, I should find the name. Someone did uh, yeah. drop us a few thank dollar you. dollar bills at the end of season one. Um, so thank you. I'm so sorry that I'm on the spot right now. I don't have your name. Uh, but know that you know who you are and we appreciate you. We've been getting some awesome super chats as well. And thank you to like Scott and Adam and all that. Mm, super duper chats. They, they know say. who they are. Um, but and yeah. Jeremy, sorry, fuck. Doctor Who's done. But we're not. Oh, we're not going anywhere. Shit, boy. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 percent. Pop, 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 ca, ca, ca. Should we normalize a single beer on a Monday night? Well, I've got two. So that kind of takes away the oh, that, single. See, that's when borderline alcoholic. Oh, what, two? Two. That's oh, a bit well. much. Sorry. Uh, sell down. Sorry, uh, folks. Sell down, Charlie. Um, later, we're going to be reviewing Period of Mars. I think we should say that. Yes. Uh, but the Tales of the Tardis cut. Uh, the Ben Cook cut. The Ben Cook. Yeah. <laughs> ben Cook. The Ben Cook. Oh, the Ben Cook cut. <laughs> um, 
The Benjamin Cook cut, yeah. Yes. So we will uh, talk through that later in the show. It's probably not going to be our longest episode or anything like that because I don't have a massive amount to say about Neither do I, really. that. Uh, <laughs> we will review it properly, like the original edit. So this is just going to be a fun little thing just to fully put the nail in the coffin of our season one coverage, I guess, right? Right. Are you, sorry, are you saying we'll review the original edit eventually? Yeah. When, when we do season 13, right. we'll, we'll do the original edit, original. Because we just did 12. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, mate. Uh, time to hear from our lovely friend, Christopher Eccleston. And I was having such a nice day. Hey. It's the news, baby. All right, um, what's happening, Aiden? What's happening in the world? Wait, uh, have you heard, Connor? It's 2024 and there's many wars awry, but there's one brand new war that has just come up. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of the war between the land and the sea. You mean the line that the dots are said in our favorite episode of season one, 73 oh, yards, series one, sorry, I should say. Maybe. Uh, like, okay, worth saying, we're recording this episode a week out of it dropping. This is all because this is going to come out seven days after we record it. Yes. yes. So there is a big chance that what we were about to say, which is pretty much a confirmed rumor, um, is going to come true. And it's not a spoiler or anything, so don't fear... It's just a bit of like strong rumor mills with strong evidence regarding the latest Doctor Who spinoff and what it could perhaps be about. Get spoiled on a show. It's literally about to be announced. Yeah. So what <laughs> we're saying is this now this show might be announced by the time because it's all heating up. It's all getting crazy. Uh, word on the street is that Doctor Who spinoff, the the war between the land and the sea, is beginning to is it, is heading into pre production about now, ready mm-hmm. to be shot in September. Um, Ricky September. <laughs> I'm here for the quips. We were done with Dot and Bubble, mate. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. We're done with that. Uh, okay, so obviously The War Between Land, the Land and the Sea is a title that's been floating around online for a while since way before season one even came out. And um, then we heard, obviously at the start of 73 Yards, we heard the doctor to say, doctor say The War Between the Land and the Sea. It never ends. The War Between the Land and the Sea. It never ends. Never, ever. Uh and earlier in the year, we did see that Bad Wolf actually acquired the like production name or something mm-hmm. for you know how like Doctor Who is made under the production name Hooniverse One or something, right? They the War Between Land and the Sea now has its own production name or something like that called the War Between Land and the Sea. So that's something that we know has been bought by Bad Wolf, right? So it's a bit of a dead get uh, giveaway, correct? So it's like the business name or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, now the latest thing going on here is that producer, line producer, Carolyn Perry Jones has updated her CV. This is how like 90% of Dr. Oh, Holmes comes out. Yeah. People update their CV just a little bit too early. Yeah. Uh, so like we said, she's a producer and her latest credit on there is the war between the land and the sea by Bad Wolf Productions, where she'll be the line producer to direct her. Dylan Holmes Williams, Whee! which means baby boy, boy is back. this soundbite ain't going hey, anywhere. That, there's no Mr. Holmes. There's no dust on it anymore. No dust, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I'm so glad he's back, Mr. Holmes. Going to get a workout, Mr. Holmes. I mean, do you think there's any connection between Mr. Holmes? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Thank Holmes. Thank you. You were just spamming, and when I <laughs> when I want you to press it, you don't. <laughs> Uh, you know how he well he directed seventy three yards, yes. so that line mm. is from seventy three yards. Mm. Do you think there's any? Do you think Russell maybe was just like, oh, you directed the episode where that line was, or was it maybe a little mm. bit pre-planned? A few thoughts on this one, mate. Yeah. Last little note before I close off my phone here. Yeah. It is uh, five one-hour episodes long. You didn't mention also the Sea Devils. Uh, well, the Sea Devils is like... What? So I can play that. <laughs> the Sea Devils is heavily rumored to be in the episode, but I think that more so stems from the title. And um, I don't mind them being in, in an episode. Nah, I just yeah, don't fu- want I them don't, to be the main... I wasn't, it, wasn't it Silurians versus Sea Devils? That's what everyone said, but I feel like that's just people seeing the title and right. running with it. Because the War Between the Land and the Sea in the episode 73 Yards is used as an explanation between... I guess like the boundaries between the the known and the unknown. Oh, the woman, right? the woman in the pub says it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a. It's sort of like what Doctor has been using to explain some of its more fantasy mm. elements, right? Like Which other it, one loves. Yeah, it's, it's at the edge of what we know. Um, thank you. I would love that if it wasn't fully that. Yes, yeah. I hope it's like seventy-three yards supernatural vibes. I, I don't need any more like crazy fantasy. 
should say that it's credited on the CV there as being a fantasy drama, not a sci-fi drama, interestingly enough. Okay. So definitely the more fantasy elements, but hopefully it's more into that supernatural, the creepier side that we got in 73 Yards. Oh, I'd love that. I would love like a folklore sort of centric. Right. So what, what, do, you think, horror? what do you think it is? Any guesses or? I think it's a five part serial, like a mini series telling one story. Right. Um, especially because it looks like Dylan Holmes Williams, Mr. Holmes is directing all five, all five. Which is so beautiful. Chef's kiss. Beautiful. Um, I don't think Sea Devil's going to be in it. Oh, um, that would be the biggest plot twist of all summer. And I think it has to be very closely connected to 73 Yards. Maybe not plot wise, but maybe just something to do with that, well, maybe that Welsh set in folklore Wales. Yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Because it's just an interesting choice. We all know he was the best director of, of the latest batch of episodes, but is that why they brought well, him back? we think so. I don't know if everyone else does, but we do. Or did they bring it back because, did they bring him back because there's more of a connection there? There could be more of a connection. I hope it doesn't take away from the episode though. That's what I'll say. Other big thing. Adds to it. The strongest rumor, and this is, there's no evidence, but at the same time as the CV came out and all the stuff started bubbling in the last two days, the other latest thing attached to that is that a girl, baby. She's back. Freeman Aggieman, Martha I'm Jones. I'm so happy about this rumor. Supposedly leading the spin-off. I love this rumor. And uh, Gemma Redgrave is going to apparently also make her appearance. Yeah, right. Well, this is all he say, she say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Kate could be a great character to be maybe that one person in all the spin-offs, maybe. Yeah, you're Nick Fury. She's the kind of uh, character that can do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yes, is the... I have a I I have a sneaky suspicion that this is true, and um, yeah, we're all gonna riot when it happens, and I'm I'm super happy. What I have found out from the last two years, since like the new season of Doc, like since the 60th and David Tennant being back, and us finding out a little too early, yeah, is that where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And everything that I've said that sounds bullshit, that's not true, has turned out to be true, right? So I'm saying, for my argument's back. Okay, I'm saying it. Maybe a cameo in season two to set up. This is so silly because it's probably already announced and we're talking like it might not happen. I know, it's, it's just crazy, so yeah. silly, but it's like, uh, If yeah. it has, just skip ahead a few minutes. I, I, I would say this though, yeah, I'm just super happy and I'd love to see her in series two. And mm-hmm. um, I'm more excited about the spinoff than yeah. series two. I think I'm still kind of Especially bummed. with Dylan now attached. Dylan is the big sell point. Same. point, yeah. Because I'm still kind of bummed out by season one and I'm like, yeah. I just don't know right now. We've seen Russell pull on a lot of strings from his era so far and stepping on them it's always mentioned the ooze sphere things like that are really consistently being mentioned and part of me is like do i want i don't know i'm just i'm just fed up with russ at the moment we know yeah, me this too. uh who ever thought we'd say that sentence i know but i'm sure it'll be great i'm sure i'm yeah i hope it'll be Your great thoughts on this now this hasn't been rumored right or there ain't no as you would say smoke Mm. Um, but do you think we might even get to see Eve Miles come back? Uh, she, be- isn't she meant to be canon wise in Wales? Yeah, she's very Welsh. Yeah, but didn't she move to the more Wales countryside? Yeah, she did. There you go. Bring her back. Russell very recently said in, in like a BAFTA, like one of those yeah. like game things that mm. they do for YouTube. They roll the dice. Yeah, you know, actors come up. Yeah, he he said he wishes he hopes to work with Eve Miles again and hopes he will Could be, be very tease. soon. I've, yeah, I've also seen like um, the Hooniverse banner. It has mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. has Sarah Jane. It has um, Gwen. Mm-hmm. It has um, Martha. Mm-hmm. And then it has a, a David Tennant, Shooty, and Tom Baker. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tom Baker represents the classics. David Tennant, you know why he's there? Shooty, <laughs> current Doctor. But then we have Sarah Jane, and um, we have. Uh, Gwen, Gwen. the Tortured series. Yeah. But we also have maybe if Martha a is little leads him. I think that could be so cool. I'm a bit mad there isn't a class character on there. Um, <laughs> quite frankly. Justice for class. Just justice for class. Well, you know, bit, someone but else is bad. There was what I was waiting for. for. No, that would be totally like out of um yeah. out of character for Doctor Who to do that. I think that'd be yeah. very strange. But I'm very excited for that. What do you think? And like we said, probably has been announced by the time this comes out. But what do you think? How likely out of 10 do you think it is that this spinoff is happening? Oh, I reckon it's 100% happening. Yeah, I think it's 10 out I of mean, 10. I mean, these rumors have been going on for ages. Yeah, man. But it's just now that it's starting to get a little bit more cookie, yeah. I think. Um, probably took a little bit longer than I would have thought, to be honest. Me too. 
Yeah. I don't know if there's a reason behind that. Mm. Um, but at least we'll we have something to, know, to fill the void because I think we'll have a bigger gap between season two and season three than we are going to have between season one and season two. Right. Um, so it'll be nice to have something. Because Shooty wants to do some other things as well. Yeah. Also, shows just take a long time to make. So um, they worked on the, these two seasons pretty intensely. So I think they all would benefit from having a break probably. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it'll be nice to have like a little mini series to fill the gap in there. Do you know what? I wouldn't say this sucks. I am grateful for having a spin off. I shouldn't say the word this sucks, but mm-hmm. like, I think this is like maybe not going to happen, but I would love to see it be like a more mature show. But they yes. might, they might go for that maybe for the second one. But I would like to see at some point a tortured base type of um, maturity for a show. I don't know if this will be it. I don't think it but needs to be Torchwood based, but just I would like one like that. It would though. be cool, yeah, yeah. But just something, maybe another project, a little bit saying. more spooky. Just yeah. something because Doctor Who is so soft at the moment. I keep using that word to describe it because I think it is. Mm. It is so just like a, it's like a cuddly thing, and I've had enough of cuddling. I'm ready to be fucking spanked. I want Doctor Who to spank me. This could be really grounded. I think, yeah. And um, spanky. And spanky, as Aiden says, yeah. Mm. I would like, obviously, like maybe um, more than one spinoff. And when the second one comes, maybe that's a bit like more tortured, mature-esque. Let's just get but, one But, you know, first. I really think that, yeah, I know. But I'm needy, man. I yeah, need man. that shit. Well, it's just it's just kind of funny knowing the, what we had before. I know the one's going to mm. compare it to what we had before. And what we had before was yeah. Tortured and Sarah Jane. Um, but last time, so we, last time we had a five-part miniseries spinoff, it was Children of Earth. So, yeah. Um, mm. uh, so you don't think you don't think Russell's gonna think Russell might do the pilot or I think you could write the pilot. Some Sorry, that's such an old TV term. Well, do they even do pilots for streaming anymore? They just oh, they just do the they whole do, yeah. series, don't they? Yeah, so like, they still do really pilots. seriously. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's still a big thing. That's such an old term. Mm. Will he be writing the pilot, old <laughs> chum? A lot of the time, pilots uh, get completely where's my, shot. Where's now. my walk and stick? Yeah. Um, but I think uh, we know that he wrote a lot less for season two of Doctor Who than he did for season one. He said there's four guest writers, which means he's only writing four episodes of season two. So. Um, maybe one's a two part final. So it might just be the opener. And he one might be between. writing probably three stories. Yeah. yeah. So that means, you know, he probably has written at least one part, I reckon, of this five part adventure extravaganza with Martha. Well, he only wrote, he only wrote um, one episode of Torture until. Uh, Children of Earth. Yeah, but that was different. That was very like um, episodic. Tortured was, whereas Tortured right. Children of Earth was a five-part serialized thing. And I've got a feeling this is going to be a serialized thing as Still well. Still, though, it's just interesting that he didn't even do like one for yeah series two. Well, he was writing a lot but of Doctor at the time. He was meant to write definitely. the season two premiere, but backed out at the last minute. Yeah, as the writer's tale. You know that from the writer's as tale. Yeah, me. Uh, and, and, and Chibnall stepped in. Right. Well, he did a lot of series one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Him and Phil Ford, I believe. Did he? Is it Phil Ford? I thought Phil did? Ford was very Sarah no, Jane. It's, it's um one it's, of one of the guys. Mostly Chris Chibnall and that's it, sorry. Toby Warehouse was quite a few and he did, yeah. sorry, Phil Phil's uh Phil's um Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Although I think he does do one. Or two. Maybe I can't remember. Either way. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see some uh, different rides and stuff. My biggest fear. Oh no. Does this thing have Disney Plus funding or Am I going to be using my fucking VPN to watch this on iPlayer on my computer? That's a really good question. Girl, that will kill me. That's a really good question. That I will have no kill idea. me. Do you think Disney's at a spot now where they are willing to? Well, I suppose this would be the ultimate test of if they were happy with the viewing figures. Or exactly. Not. If, they, if, if the spinoff is a Disney Plus thing. If it's not, then it is blatantly obvious that... Uh, Though surely they would have had to have um, confirmed funding months ago. Probably, for, yeah. But so that would have been before series one aired. But we series know, one, fuck me. Sorry, I know people are going to pick me up on that. We know what productions are like these days. Studios, streamers, yeah. they are not afraid to pull the pin at any point in a production, even after an entire feature film has almost finished post-production. So... Like if am I supposed to know what that was? What was that then? It's happened a few times, like Batgirl. Oh, Batgirl! Heaps. Right. It's happened like three times in the last two That's years. That's like Coyote movie that got yeah. completely. Yeah. Yep. So um, yeah, we know they're not afraid to just unplug tax that write-offs. Pin. Tax write-offs, mate. Um. All right. So, any last words on that? Any last words, Sunny Jim? Um. I hope the pilot's good, old chum. I don't know. I'm just very excited for it. I'm more keen than the 
actual series. And this mm-hmm. is me from the past who doesn't even know it's confirmed. And I'm saying that. So, um, yay. Yay. Um, I just hope we get some cool rides as well. Maybe a little Phil Ford riding episode. Maybe. I'd be very happy about that. Let's. That would be cool because we know Phil Ford did Tales of the Tardis stuff. So he's Correct. still hanging around. Yeah, it was him, Phil, and Pete. Oh, maybe it's Pete. Pete coming back. Pete. Sure, why not? Bring him back. Maybe it's Chibnall. Um, we know he does good with uh, spin offs. All right, let's answer a couple of questions here because we are pretty light on uh, the topics to talk about at the moment. Uh, we reached out online and just said, hey, fling us some questions. And we might, I literally put this out like five minutes ago. So there isn't a lot going on, but I've got a couple in and then I'll check again at the end of the episode and see if there is much more. We also put it on Instagram if you want to check that. I'm on Instagram right now. Oh, uh, we've got I nothing see. on Twitter yet. We have two on Instagram. Oh, Twitter, so, you twat. Twitter. Um, okay, <laughs> so relating to the topic we just had, Alo Lack says, do you believe rumors that Martha's the lead of the Sea Devil spinoff? Not sure if I do. Yes. Where the smoke, there's fire, baby. Yeah, I do. Where the smoke, there's fire. I think it's a great choice. Mm-hmm. Where do you get fans excited, you know? Mm-hmm. Bring her back. Bring, Bring her, her back. Why's she not been hanging around Unit? That's my question. Well, maybe that's why Unit's in it as well. She still works for them, apparently. Oh. oh. Aiden. <laughs> get you on the riding team of land in the sea. Please, I beg of you. Please. Co- or do you think it's actually called that? Or do you reckon that's like a working title? The like war between the land and the like sea? A- production titles it's so like it's so long but yeah, also it's russell it's said he has an eight word title for a spin-off doesn't he he said before the 60th came out yeah before the main trailer had come out he said that the original trailer that came out that was disgusting at the end of Sorry, the, you, you crack your knuckles are you yeah not into the microphone it's uh, down here yeah, <laughs> yeah um but yeah it is eight words I've, t- I've done the count stop the count no it's not we're gone is it nine? No, no, it's uh, not. You say your thing and I'll say my thing. Um, if you can remember. <laughs> before the 60th, he said, we have an eight word title to announce. And we were all like, the 60th has an eight word title, but that never came into anything. So was it the spinoff? Wrong. Tell me. It was for Wild Yonder, I think. Eight it words. It was originally going to be, off we go into the Wild Blue Yonder that was originally the title. But why would that have been announced in the... It would have been either one of the two. It would have been um, the war between the land and the sea. Maybe the Star Beast was originally called the really big Star Beast by Generation Rose. The really big Star that... Beast by Generation Rose. Donna. Noble. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Noble. There we Put go. her last name in there. Um, okay, all right. Another question here from Cole David Forty says, "How do you think Doctor Who can keep you guys interested in the future? Hype fatigue? Question mark. Just some good fucking writing. I think just Is like it rocket science for these uh, writers at the BBC. I'm sorry, dear listener, but I think if I didn't have this podcast, I would be bored as fuck of Doctor Who right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like someone asked me on the stream the other day. It's like, what will it, what will it take for you to stop watching? And it's like nothing, and that's the problem. I think mm. they know fans are going to keep showing up." I think the issue is that like new fans haven't shown up, but they'll always have this huge fan base that will watch. Yeah, me with the steel um, books. I'm always going to. Well, there you for go. Them. You know, but realistically, so, yeah, I think a change of angle. Uh huh. I think um, too late. Uh, yeah, too late. <laughs> We've already got season two film, baby. Oh but yeah. I think. Uh, oh yeah. This series didn't really bring me anything new. Um, I like to break down errors, and you, you can tell a Chibnall error script for better or for worse. From a Moffat era script, you can easily describe Moffat era script as a fantasy piece. And then, you know, I always say season five is the fantasy, season six is the nightmare, and season seven is when they sort of grew out of the out of nightmares and dreams and fantasies. Uh, it's sort of my look at it. Bit wanky, but yeah, it is very <laughs> wanky. But I, you know, it all, it all ties back to fantasy and childhood and childhood yeah. uh, storytelling and things. Yeah. Um, and then Russell's obviously the soap opera thing. Uh, which I think he did again here, just not as interesting. Mm. And then he did fantasy again here, just nowhere near as good as Moffat did because Moffat's fantasy was still sci-fi. Um, so I think just a change of angle, seriously, I need Russell to bring me something new. Yeah, I hope. I do hope that series two is like, you know, an, an, a much of an improvement, but... Honestly, I'm not holding my breath because I feel like it's just not going to be. So I think it's one of those things where <laughs> it's like, 
that's the beauty of getting new showrunners all the time is that everyone brings in something new mm. that they didn't even know. Like, because he's the first other showrunner they brought back, hey? Yeah, and I think this is the first time we've actually had someone come back and sort of seen, oh no, yeah. Maybe that's not the best idea. We've already done this before. Yeah. Bye. Uh, but also I think they were in a conundrum where they didn't, no one really did want to take it over. So I think- What I am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Who? The Saranga conundrum. The Saranga conundrum. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather this than nothing, but- um, Yes, true. Yeah. Rather than Doctor Who be dead. Doctor Ooh, dead. Did you hear my ankle crack then? See, you've been complaining about me cracking my uh, fingers. Oh yeah, true. I, I think didn't do that, that on purpose I think though. that was heard and my my knock, my my fingers weren't. Do you want to see another crack? Sure. Carly's crack. <laughs> <laughs> the greatness of series series five to six and seven. Yeah, baby. Uh, uh, yes. Let's talk yes. about Puna Mars for a little bit, shall we? Sure. What do you want to ask me? I don't know, man. So this- <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Pyramids of Mars, specifically the Tales of the TARDIS edition. Um, this was a new cut of the, the classic Doctor Who story. Um, the Period of Mars. Sorry, I just burped into the microphone. What um, makes it so fucking classic? <laughs> uh, the original story aired between the 25th of October 1975 to the 15th of November 1975, consisting of four 25 minute parts. The Ben Cook, Ben Cuck, cut uh, <laughs> is four 25 minute is parts edited down into one 75 minute story with yeah. about a minute and a half of Shudi Gatwa and Millie Gibson at the start and the end in traditional tales of the TARDIS fashion. Well, sort of. I mean, there was a lot more than previous ones. Yeah, I feel like uh, these Tales of the Tardis don't have a lot of budget and then when they actually have to pay Shooty and Millie, the rates that are definitely a lot more expensive than, for example, Colin Baker and uh, Nic Nicola Bryant. Yeah, but surely they would have just done it in the film and slot for Empire of Death. Yeah, but that funding's still got to come from somewhere. Yeah, I know, but it's like, well, why are you here? Still got to pay him. <laughs> I know, but it's like, why are you here? Um, Why don't you do this? Story is supposedly iconic, and once again, we will review this story <laughs> properly when we get to it in our. In Did our you say supposedly iconic? Oh yeah, I've never heard anyone talk about it until. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, Wait, I've never heard anyone talk about it. You've never heard anyone talk about the pyramids of Mars? Nope. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No. No. Do you actually live like under like a fucking rock? For, like yeah, I do, man. Room. On on Mars with with. With a bag over my eyes and my fingers in my ears. Going, nah, 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 nah. Oh, Mars. Where is Mars? That's it. Well done, mate. No, I've never heard. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. I can't um, believe what's it. it. What's it to do with you? <laughs> no. Well, I, I'm just like, not until Sutek got mentioned really? a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I'm sure I have heard. No, but you're like, you've never yeah. like picked up on it, right? No. Because I, 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 I haven't. Uh, before I got into Classic Who, I always knew that this was like a story. I didn't really, really tell, couldn't tell you anything about it back then. But okay. I, I knew it was a Tom Baker story. Right, that's interesting. I didn't have any. Mm, interesting. Like Tom's done uh, a may, lot of maybe stories. Maybe he did have a lot of stories. I've always, I remember always back when like JB Hi-Fi would have all the classic Who individual DVDs mm. stacked up. I was always very like looking at the titles of those and stuff. So maybe. Um, Pyramid of Mars uh, scratch your noggin a little bit, I see. I'm what? Tickled your fancy? Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's I was probably like, more of a better term. Mm, I like yeah. the waters of Mars. And then what did I get you for your birthday? The canine box set. <laughs> no, you got me the fucking, the, the beginning. Unearthly child? Yeah. yeah. Unearthly right. child. I always got those two mixed up. Yeah. I remember for this year. <laughs> just, the, <laughs> just the standard edition of- uh, I already of have those on Blu-ray, I think. What, from Pyramid Mars? No, from the canine set. You're very welcome. <laughs> just- didn't get me it, but that's okay. You're very welcome, man. Uh, in a Victorian Gothic mansion, Ooh. strange things are afoot. The master of the house, away in Egypt, has been replaced by a sinister Egyptian. Cloth wrapped mummies roam the grounds, killing people. Beneath a pyramid, the last of the Ozerans, Sutek the Destroyer, waits to be freed. At long last, brings his gift of death to all that lift. What? Wait. Don't make me laugh. To at long last bring the gift of death to all who live. Long last? <laughs> Everyone's dying to meet him. People are dying. People, people are dying. dying. People, people are dying. dying. Need that on the soundboard. So you had never seen this before? I had not. I did not. Okay. And then you watched it on the... I think we both watched it on the Friday. Separately. Yeah. Came out on a Thursday in the UK. Yeah. And then we watched it on the Friday night. Yeah. And I must prefix this. I know I said this last week on the pod. Oh, yeah. Your awful time. <laughs> But it took me 45 minutes using a VPN because BBC kept fucking blocking it and I had to keep like deleting cookies and sneaking my way 
into fucking iPlayer to watch this motherfucker. And I finally did. I was angry by the time because of how long it took me to do it. It was a Friday night and it was now like 10 p.m. by the time I was starting it. So I was a bit sleepy. And then, and then. And it's like 75 minutes. And I start it. I'm like, oh, the quality's not that great. And not because it's old Doctor Who, but because BBC iPlayer, I guess, was just being like that for me. I've heard some people have difficulties with iPlayer quality. Um, 10 minutes in, it freezes. 15 minutes in, it freezes. 20 minutes in, it freezes. Goes completely black and I have to reload and work my way back into iPlayer again. And then it freezes a few more times. So I will say, I did not watch this episode under the best conditions. If only it was available, not just through the BBC iPlayer website, or if the BBC iPlayer was a uh, maybe a much more accessible service, well, I would happily how- pay a subscription fee for it. I was going to say that. I mean, I know you cut it out of an episode. It was right at the end. I can see why you did it. But uh, I can fully legally say, I'm going to do the bit again. <laughs> I can fully legally say that I watched this episode for a VPN. Mm. And um, I do it a bit different to you. I have a Apple device. So I literally mm. just go, uh, I like, I don't airplay it. I screen share to my Samsung TV. Mm. That's how I watch Sarah Jane. And I'm upstairs like, and you know what's great about it um you can't you can't go off your phone to scroll twitter while the classic episodes play because your phone is the screen it's just you are forced to watch that it literally it literally is just like it's like mirroring it so you have to yeah not that i'd ever go on my phone while watching classic who so yeah, same with this. I'm literally just like you're watching Doctor Who with your parents, and then all of a sudden, that, like some girls come up on the screen, and you're like, that, "Oh shit!" No, that's the thing. Like, I also I also have to zoom in to make it like like the uh, the bots. So you actually can't see messages come in, which is oh, which is good. also quite handy. Yeah, all your Tinder messages. What's the? I'm not on Tinder actually. Um, uh. What's that film with like they have the match the matchsticks in the eyes? It's like a Stanley Kubrick film, and they. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I had that's to do. That's a reference that when I rewatched Empire of Death, yeah, I had to put rewatch. Those. So this is your second time watching. When it. I rewatched Empire of Death, I had to put fucking sticks, matchsticks in my eye. Do we? And then, and as that got to the end, I decided to pull the matchsticks out, turn them around, and shove them into my eyes. Nice. Are we just trying to do everything we can to not talk about the episode? Let's talk about the episode. What did you think? This is the first time you're watching it. First time I watched it, mate. Right. Um, intros and outros sh- with shooting Amelia. I thought they were great. I thought that was all I needed. Like, would have been nice for longer scenes, but we're also in the middle of season one. I don't need more of them. But we just had eight episodes. Before Doctor. Yes, but I got away by the skin of my teeth. I really like Tales of the Tardis as a concept for like getting people into watching classic Doctor Who. So I thought this was a great use of that, especially considering a Tom story. There's not many people around to do the intros and outros for them. So this was a neat little way of doing one of them. Mm. Now the episode itself. Did you, did you, did anything, did any part of you expect Tom Baker to be like, Oh, that's the thing. Remember <laughs> I was there, young boy. Yeah, part of me, there was part of me that kind Why of Why am hoped, I doing my first Doctor? Yeah. <laughs> part of me hoped that maybe like there was going to be like one shot of him or something that they'd gone into like his backyard to film yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, just him going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What a story! Like at the end of <laughs> at the end of Shada. Yeah. <laughs> what a story! <laughs> I remember that. No, um, it wasn't there. It, nothing there. But I'm not mad about it. He's an old dude. We're probably never going to see him again in Who. R.I.P. Well, no, not yet. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> poor poor goat, poor greatest of all time. Uh, before we get into pyramids, what did you think of the intro and the outros of the Tales of the Tardis? <sighs> it's like fine. I remember being a bit disappointed. What annoyed me the most is that, like, I did try to avoid spoilers all day, but, like, I kept, like, seeing little clips on Twitter. And it's just funny. I only accidentally saw, like, one or two. And I felt like I saw everything. Like, there wasn't really much to... um, It's also funny. Like, there's that tweet where it's, like, Mel's just asleep at the door (laughs) the whole time. (laughs) I like how they use the um, old dead spider, Jodie Tyler, as, like, a campfire. That's cool. I like that. I guess it's, like, a heater. It's like a heater or something, and mm. I like that. Um, I think the memory TARDIS set is like stunning. Mm. It's funny now you bring it up. We mentioned you mentioned this in the Empire Death Review. It, the set does look smaller. Mm. I don't see why it would have been. I, I don't know. It looked but better it, in the original it, Tales of the TARDIS. I thought, but it did. You're right. Though, it did look bigger. It did. There was something some, a bit more magical about it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, I like it though. I like. Mm. I think you're right. The whole concept idea to get people to watch classic who is got you um, to do it. 
Hmm? Got you to do it, didn't it? Yeah, it was a fucking waste of time. And I don't feel like it added anything to the Empire. To Empire. But um and look, I know this is a bit of a controversial opinion that uh some people have a bit of a problem with that I say. But I still think it's a bit dumb that you have to like I know you're gonna say you feel like it wasn't homework, but I still think it was a bit annoying that it does kind of for some audience members, i.e. me, to feel like I have to watch this episode to maybe understand what's going on. And then eventually I watch it and it was like, what was the point really? I'm glad I did it. I think that's a burden you put on yourself though. Because it's just uh, a fun little bit of bonus material in my, yeah, in my book. Yeah, that's true. But I still think that like, I still think that there are people out there that would have been confused as to who Sutek is and don't want to watch a 75 minute episode of Classic and Doctor Who. And I don't think you have to. Mm. I know many people that watched it and haven't seen. Really? Yeah. My mates that I've watched it haven't seen Tales of the Tardis. They well, can't fucking watch Tales of the Tardis. Well, with respect, eh? And your mates aren't the population of the world. And No, they're not. But they, I guess, I sum up your heard, standard international audience. I have heard from multiple sources that people struggled. Well, not but personally sent to me, but I've heard <laughs> kind of acting through. like he's like talking to people on the street, like, "Hey, no, nah, did I you was... watch Empire Death?" And by the way, did you also get a VPN and watch Tales of the Tardis? No, it just, did it like, make a difference for you, or were you confused? I just I've heard that some people were confused by it. Um, I do like the I love the idea of Tales of the Tardis, and I didn't have an issue with it. I just think something something uh, did irk me a little bit mm. that between the episodes there was a Tales of the Tars that dropped that was almost saying like, oh, you might enjoy it a bit more if you watch this episode. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we know that you disagree with that mm-hmm. and that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's um, fine, Aiden. Talk to me about Pyramids of Mars, the episode itself. Oh. What do you think about it? I think it's like... Um, fun to see more Sarah and uh, the Doc and some more uh, Sladen and Baker. Um, I even guessed just before I asked you, like, is this the season after that I just watched for the show, which is season 12? Mm -hmm. And um, I know Harry Sullivan leaves um, in the first serial of series 13. Am I uh, right yes, so far of all yeah. this shit? I think it's Terror of the Zygons. It's a Zygon episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when he's wearing that beret, I believe. The Raspberry Beret. I don't know. And um, fake fan over here. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> Both of us haven't seen it. <laughs> Is that the first Zygon episode? Uh, yeah, it's the only Zygon episode. Oh, yeah, true. Of Classic Who, um, I think. And uh, thanks for that, Moffat, bringing them back. Um, I, 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 it just kind of gets, because I believe this is, this is Sladen's last season. No, season 14 is. Oh, I'm a silly goose. Nah, fake fan, fake nah, fan, fake You fan. got me. Yeah, okay. I'm good, baby. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. It's cool to see them together again. Um, I guess the funny thing about watching this episode is like, you know, um, I, I had heard on a live stream Jeremy saying that uh, Jeremy's a fan of the show, I should add. Mm. Jezza. Uh, that Jezza had said, like, you know, Sutek kind of does just sit around for like nine mm. hours in the episode. I do agree with that. I was very disappointed by Sutek, I must say. Me too. And I was mm. thinking that once we get Empire, it'll be different, but it wasn't. Mm. But that's a story for a different time. Sutek um, sits. Should be called sit tech. Yeah, sit tech, you mm. know. I think this is just standard who I've seen a lot of, wor- of worse episodes. I just think mm. like I was in such a rush that day and it had only come out, I believe, fast, like what, like early hours of Friday morning mm. and we I had couldn't watch it till I one come t- back from work. Choice of when we could watch it, which was Friday night, which was a little bit frustrating. I would yeah. have liked it to have dropped earlier in the week. And but. I can't remember what I was doing that. I think I was doing a live stream. That's right. I was doing a live stream that night and like I, and I was really under like a rush to watch it. And I felt like I couldn't really enjoy it for what it was. But mm-hmm. for what it is, I think it's like a, a pretty standard story. It's it's funny how like they only really go to Mars in like part four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Despite it being called Pyramids of Mars, I thought it was all set on Mars before I watched it. I actually thought they never go to Mars in it. Really? Yeah. Well, I thought they. I thought the entire <laughs> thing was set on Mars. I thought it was like the the monsters were from Mars. Right. I, but I didn't actually think they went to Mars because I knew it had like a Victorian mansion vibe. Yeah, to I it. didn't know that. No. Mm. Um, well, I guess we were both surprised in different ways. Yeah, I guess for some reason when I think of um, Pyramids of Mars, I think of Empress of Mars, and that's all set mm. on Mars. And, and the uh, Waters of Mars, which and was the also, of Mars set was also set on Mars. Except for the last five minutes. They go to Mars a lot, don't they? Um, they do. Even the Rose goes, goes to, to Rose. Yeah, with Rose, <laughs> Rose Noble. Um, I wonder if I th- she had more than one I, line. I think. 
<laughs> I think it's just kind of like fine. Um, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. I haven't seen the original cut either. I, I've seen some people complain, like something about our hands. Like they mm. cut the best scene. I haven't seen the original. Oh no, the hand. So. Here's the hand thing. Yeah, what is that? This is a Ben Cuck edit. So right, wow, you're really ki- you're really keen on saying that. Hey, I just think it's a funny line. Uh, when <laughs> Jeez. when Sutek finally stands from his chair, uh-huh. uh, there's a guy, and I found him on Twitter. He actually put up a tweet saying, "Never removed my hand." Um, he what? Sorry. So there's a guy whose hand, uh, when Sutek stands, I think he has to hold the cushion on the throne. But Sutek stands and his hand is like in clear view, just holding it down, and then it like disappears. Right, so it's like a uh, it's like a production error. Yeah, and the guys whose hand it is. Well, is why wouldn't you cut that on Twitter? Yeah, they just like VFX it out. But it, it, I don't know. It's like an iconic thing. It's like I don't Removing want them- the head hit from the stormtrooper almost in like the yes, or or the hand on the Velociraptor in the kitchen scene in Jurassic Park. Right. Um. Do you know that one? No, I'm not a huge Jurassic Park fan. There's a guy like holding up a Velociraptor in the scene at Jurassic Park and you can just see the hand. Uh, I'm more of a Jurassic Park fan, Futurama. Okay. Okay. Uh, that threw you off. Yeah, I'm lost now. <laughs> um, no, I, I think, yeah, I think I think it's a fine episode. Um, mm-hmm. So you take looks really silly once, like he's just like a, he is a dog. I kind of vibe it. It's and like the dog grew, I suppose. Big dog, mate. Oh yeah, when he gets like the weird dog face. Yeah, it goes, yeah. I think what the doing? original look. It's kind of like again. I haven't seen. Oh no, I have seen Omega's. Omega's the three doctors. Yeah, I have seen Omega. Omega. I like. um, Megatron. Omegatron. It kind of gave me Omega vibes. <laughs> we should call Omega the Megatron from now on. How many more episodes is he in? One. Well, I'm excited. That's Baker, isn't it? Uh, Davison. Oh my god, I'm such a shit fan. It's actually a fun episode. Everyone hates that one. But like it's kind of shit, but it's also set in Amsterdam via the episode and they shot on location in Amsterdam. Does he keep screaming? They're all on duh, weed. Duh. All, really? No. I oh. just think that's funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, uh, this, what did I think? Does Omega yeah, just but just quickly, does Omega scream in the episode still? Ah, doctor. <laughs> doctor. What did you think? Yeah, that was fine. Like I said, I was angry watching it. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought the villain sat in a chair and everyone's like, this is the best classic who villain to ever exist. I've always known that Sutek is the best classic who to ever exist, bar Davros. Why people say that? Yeah, they fucking do, mate. They do. Well, how come I, Connor Haddon, the biggest classic <laughs> who fans, never heard of him? <laughs> I don't know. You got selective hearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, and I was just like, oh yeah, fucker just sits on a chair and eventually stands up and looks like a dog. A weird dog. Or a jackal, people say. Oh yeah, um, a jack of all trades. Correct, because he he hypnotizes people, and they're all different people and different trades. But you know the main thing about this episode? Yeah, it just has a vibe. There's a vibe to it that I really like, like this like uh, Victorian esque mansion, like this Gothic mansion vibe. I really love the imagery of the Egyptian stuff. I'm kind of sad that that's not something they went too far down in the uh, in Empire of Death. Cultural appropriation. Um, I guess, but whatever. Whatever that means. Um, I know Sutek had like his Egyptian collar on or whatever, but I, I just think it's, it would have been nice to have gone to Egypt or something in the in the new episode or do something a bit like temple We thought that was going to happen, that, didn't we? Yeah. You know how they had like mummies and, and mm. sarcophaguses and stuff? I just feel like that's such a cool thing. And it, it's part of the iconog- iconography of, of the story. And uh, yeah, I, I think- Do you like the mummies? The- when they squeeze that person to death with their tits? Yeah, and do you like how With it's, pecs, it's so say. obviously just Tom Baker doing like ADR, but it's just it's the the, the mummy. It's they yeah yeah. It's yeah. obviously a different person under it. Yeah, and somehow they got the doctor under there looking perfect. Yeah, to be disguised. Mm-hmm. Is it Liz Sladen who has the gun? I can't remember. Is she firing the gun and it hits the? Pew, and they blow up the little pew, the, the, the yeah, missile. Is, is Sladen on the gun? Is it someone yeah, else? I can't remember. Am I? I was too angry. I was just sitting red. Robot yeah. mummies. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. I like. I like one. Probably the only thing I appreciated about watching it, I guess, was like, um, I like how the episode it, it showed me that Sutek can um, hypnotize people, mm. and we see that in the episode in Empire of Death. Mm, true. Um, I like it's the like human. Such a silly little thing to like. I like the human characters in it, and I thought that the way that they look was a bit more scary than the slightly more exaggerated version of it that they look like an empire of death. Mm. 
Um, although mm. I do like the Empire Death look, I just think it it's the classic like going a bit further with it than what it was in the past. And we got to do it bigger and better. What it was in the past was quite subtle and quite effective. Yeah, I think it's a fine episode. I'll continuously compare classic Doctor Who to Tintin, the comics and the TV show, which I know no one's made that comparison, but it's just all that Aiden's shaking his head. I don't know. Um, it's just all I can really compare it to. I always get like Tintin vibes from Some people it. compare me to Tintin. Yeah? Mm, I say I look like him. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Um, well, they say I look like uh, Archie from uh, Riverdale. Oh, yeah. From the That's Archie the comics. Isn't well. that isn't that Tintin? No. Oh, Archie, Archie Comics is Riverdale. There's Archie Comics and that's Riverdale, yeah. I believe. Yeah. I don't fucking know. The, the ginger. Completely different. Tintin's Swedish, I believe. Oh. Um, Herge's Adventures of Tintin. I used to like, I read all the comics and I read, I watched all the cartoons. Remember um, when Stephen Moffat wrote a Tintin movie? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Have you and seen I, it? Yeah, I really like it. Oh, cool. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, Spielberg produces it. Um, what a small world. Yeah. It's got a great cast. I love it. Like, I, I think it's really good. It's, it's a mixture between two different books. The, does, does it, does it, does it have a dog in it? The Lost, what, um, Snowy? It's got that dog yeah, in it. Yeah, Snowy's in it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like the Lost Unicorn, I think, and it's, uh, <laughs> and the, and the crab story. <gasps> Tintin the crab. and the Lost Unicorn. <laughs> the Lost, I think it's, is it Lost Unicorn or the Lost something? It's like the, it's the bow. And then I haven't watched them in a long time. That sounds the, like fucking season two of Doctor the Who. The kind of crab and that's when they meet Captain Haddock. Yeah, they're great. But it always reminds me of, it always reminds me of classic Doctor Who. I don't, Cause like, that's what Tintin would do. Like they, Tintin would just randomly be at like a fucking, what do they call it? Victoria. It wasn't Victoria. Mansion. Yeah, he would just be yeah, a, a mansion, mansion, like a gothic mansion. Yeah, he would just round me be there with like Professor Calculus and stuff, and um, Thompson and Thompson would be there. Like they're great comics. Like, but it just mm. reminds me of that. It's like, mm. plus who's quite episodic in a sense with this with the serials, and it's like it's like yeah. a big bombastic four episodes, six episodes, sometimes two, very rarely, and it's like it's mm. the same thing. Sometimes and three, of, sometimes three, only once, one, no, only twice, one. Um, Dalek, fucking Dalek Master Plan. Mission to the Unknown. the Snares did before that. Yeah. yeah. And what's the, do you say twice there was one? Well. We're um, getting hung up on, this is, uh, uh, let's, uh, you're talking about the TV be, movie? That would be, no, no, it would be um, Unearthly Child. Oh yeah, but people count that as like a full parter. Well, I don't. Well, this is you that counts Utopia as part one of a three parter. Remember, like, remember you got so angry at me when I used to say that? Like, shut up. What do you think of the plot of Pyramids of Mars? They want to shoot a, Pyramid missile at Ma at 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 a thing. Don't ask me. To, <laughs> and You're some the wrong person. somehow that would release Zutek from the pyramid. I like that. I like the idea of a god that's imprisoned wanting to break out. I just would have liked to see a bit more of him broken out they in the last the key. The Osterhagen key. Martha Jones. If you do not use that key, and that is an order, Harriet Jones. Sorry, bitch. Forget about the key. <laughs> then when someone asked about it, she's like, forget about the key and that's an order. Who created the Osterhagen? Oh, someone called Osterhagen, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, where's that dialogue in season one, mate? I know, I know, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, but don't you think similar to, to, yeah, to be honest, the Empire key, of though. Death? It was the key though that they needed to go back and to get Sutek. To, but wouldn't it, like same as in Empire of Death, I feel like we just need to to see a bit more of Sutek, like winning, like because the god in both of them is so easily defeated. Mm. I feel like both of them miss an opportunity to have Sutek like doing crazy shit. Well, he gets defeated while coming through the vortex. And then they chuck him in the vortex. And then he Which comes the out of the vortex, and then he goes back into the vortex. And as one of our listeners has told us killed the Vortex and that obviously makes sense as to why Sutek then dies because he's in the Time Vortex. It doesn't make any sense. It um, doesn't because if the Time Vortex dies then everyone dies surely. I like how they um, reused the Vortex. Oh, they like remastered they the, it. they that added was, the new series Vortex into it. That was yeah. cool to see. Um, I suppose there's some cool things about it. I don't know. It I was good. It was, it was enjoyable. I thought it was standard. I liked it. I like but the I vibe, mate. It. There's a vibe. There That's was much better season 12 episodes that I watched. Really? Yeah. I think when we go through and we watch this as the full story, I, I hope and I think we'll like it more. Isn't he bitching about the Brigadier at the beginning? But you said he doesn't, the Brig doesn't show up again till, till Five Doctors, didn't you say? E just before that. It's just funny how like they bring him up, but he's like 
not in this series at all, mm. season at all. Well, he's in the start of the season. Didn't they say they meant to dematerialize? Oh, he's in the Zygon one. Yeah. Oh, silly me. Uh, didn't they say like they meant to dematerialize at unit? It's like this is unit, but it's in a different time. That's what they say. It was like a unit safe house or something, or like I can't. Rem- I couldn't tell. Well, you. this is great. It's a good review. And this is why we will return <coughs> and review this story properly when we review season 13. We just wanted to talk on it to With just... the extra one minute 30 of footage. How much was cut? Well, 50, about an episode, I guess. Because 25 to 50 to 75. Yeah, so about an episode length was cut. It's just so interesting to me. And this isn't a person to anybody in particular. Like, it really is. But it's just so interesting to me that, like, one person's job is to make the cut and it's like their personal opinion on what they think should be cut and what should be kept in. It's just interesting to me. I'm sure they... That's um, no personal attack on anybody. I'm sure they go like like feedback to a few people and be like, oh, "Oh, does this work? Sure, but yeah. There is... um, I did not... And like I said, not seen the original cut. So I could be wrong about these cuts, but there was stuff that jumped out to me just as like strange editing... I like cross cutting, but there was stuff that felt obviously like it wasn't planned to be cross cut, but it felt like perhaps in this edit right, was being cross cut. It just like jumped out to me, like the pacing was weird. Right. It just didn't quite sit right for me. And there was a few times as well where it felt like maybe yeah. some scenes had cut in. I think there was a moment like where they left the TARDIS and then it like cut straight to them outside the TARDIS in the next scene but it felt like they'd just cut, they'd shave like two seconds off the runtime of them walking out of the TARDIS and it just felt jolty. Cut it down, God Which I, it. I could be wrong about, but it just felt like, I just feel like if that is, if those cuts are real, they're just not that necessary. Like they, we should have just had, we don't need want to ruin the flow of scenes for the sake of cutting this thing down. Look, I'm watching it. Just, I'm yeah. going to watch it. I'm going to watch like, it, baby. Yeah. Speaking of that scene though, that is so similar to The Devil's Chord because- um, what scene? What scene? What Sarah scene? Jane goes, Doctor, the world doesn't end in 19... Yeah, that's what everyone was saying during I'm the Devil's right Court. Now. Yeah. I, I didn't... You missed that? Well, I didn't watch it, you know. And uh, then he takes her to... It's. Even, I think it's very much a homage because it's even like... It the, must be. The Doctor's like looking at the console and not yep. watching her walk out behind. So Yep. And then yeah. I guess it's kind of cool. And then... What? What? <laughs> Do you think there's a world where... Um, they changed the VFX out the door and it's like the London oh, deteriorated. Wow. Oh my God. Could you imagine that? That would just be so jarring. It would be so jarring. I'm not used to these like updated edits. I watched the horror Fang Rock um, comparisons on YouTube and it's cool. Um, do you personally put them on when you watch on the sets? Um, sometimes I, I tend to give them a try, but if I feel right. like they're more detracting, then that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel are. like it might. So some, I, sometimes I turn them off after bit. an episode or two. Right. The main yeah. one I tried, I think it's Enlightenment, a Davison story. Um, and I remember like really like digging the vibe of it. And I was watching it with the special effects on. And then it would cut to a special effects shot. And I was like, oh, this looks fucking terrible. And like fucking backed out, like right. emergency hit remote to back out of that. Because Cause I've seen yeah. the horror fan rock one. It, it's funny because like the creature that they show in the updated version is like, it's not how I imagined the creature from the original and that kind of took it away from me so i was oh, like I and you know that's my favorite episode of classic of all time so oh, I see. yes i see oh i see i think it's standard to answer your question aiden green good uh, vibe though do you admit there's a good vibe uh, i think it's tintin like i think it's just like okay. it's very um like changes the vibe every comic or every episode okay fair. um you know fair. It, it, it's a different setting it's a different place and um yeah well i don't think we do a score for this i, I, I this feel like we did six tin tins out of ten snowies i think this was like a fake review do you know what i mean like it was more we just wanted to talk about this new cut sort of thing like we're not diving into the characters the what's what i don't personally think that i watched it in the circumstances that allowed me to give it the best go so I'd rather hold off giving big calls like this I also never, until I see the episode properly. I haven't. This is the first Tales of Tars I've watched fully. Like in same, the, actually. The all the all the old ones I just watched the <laughs> just saints. Mm-hmm. Same. Um, and uh, may God have mercy on my soul. One day you'll sit down and you'll watch the whole thing, Mister Holmes. Bum, bum, Did anyone bum, ask me to think on Twitter or are we? Um, I'm free. You're free to go home. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, we got no more Q and A's because no one likes us. Wow, 
Um, it surprised me that people asked on Instagram and not Twitter because Twitter's normally more popping off. Yeah, Twitter's just dead today, apparently. Uh, guys. It's a Monday. Thank you for checking in with us again. Bit of a weird, like, um, this was a bit of an episode that was a little bit of a uh, uh, war between land and the sea. It was very 50%-y, baby. It was just very, like, not quite a normal episode for us. It was like a buffer episode before next week when we get into, should we do Sarah Jane next week to get sure. back into the flow of things? We'll do uh, Sarah. Let me let me message Joseph Milson when I leave to try and see if he can send in a quick message. Yeah, okay. Hello, fifty percent. Cool. Oh, Sorry, I couldn't make it on. Friend of the show. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see if we'll see if they can. If he doesn't reply, on. he's going on the off-screen whiteboard of hell of people that have uh, ignored you know, our messages. Home Williams is on there. Did you message him? I did. Put his name. And on I the don't. Whiteboard. By the way, I don't blame him at all for not getting back to me. Sagan Akinola is also on that whiteboard. I just. Ba- yeah, Sagan's on there. I basically sent him a message before, like, even Sony Free Arts came out, and I think I underestimated how I thought he was maybe just, like, a smaller director. Yeah, right. And I was like, hey, buddy. <laughs> you even messaged me, being like, Connor, you've been down the pub. I've seen you've been messaging a director. I was like, oh, I was fully sober when I sent that. Oh, yeah. I just got bad grammar. No, yeah. I always check the camera. I can always say pissed Connor. Um, no. Uh, hold on, the camera stop. Oh my god! I can always tell when Connor's pissed because I just go into the fifty percent DMs on Instagram and can see that his message is like a Doctor Who director or something I was like that. Sober. You crazy man? I was just it's that's just, fair. I was just trying. Like you, you, God loves a trial. He does. Yeah. Well, next week we'll see you, and we'll be doing what's it the what's the episode of Sarah Jane called? The something Sonic, about the Sontarans. Sontarans. The Sontaran thing. The Sontaran. The last Sontaran. Sarah Jean. The last Sontaran. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it? Before? Oh yeah. All right, well, I'm keen to give it a watch. For the I've seen all of season one and season two, and I've seen most of series three. I think I've seen bits of this one, but not all of it. Like, I, like I have memories of this episode, but couldn't tell you anything about it. So that'll be exciting. Well, it's Marie's last episode. R.I.P. Marie. Ah, Marie. <laughs> this is Breaking Bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Marie. Marie. Jesus Christ. They're minerals, Marie. <laughs> Classic. That throws me back. All right. That's it. Uh, thanks, folks. Happy and- Monday. Uh, we're looking forward to that crash hot in sexy beast of a uh, announcement for the war between land and the sea. Well, it's that's all right then. Aiden's and Connor's podcast. We're doing Doctor Who reviews well, kind on of. Monday. Doing Doctor Who reviews. How's that not a review? We literally sat there and spoke about it. Yeah, I gave it mm. I gave it six tin tins out of ten snowies. Uh, I would give it maybe seven tin tins out of eight mummies. Out of ten mummies. It just purely based on vibe. Just had a vibe. The cummy. <laughs> Remember that meme, the cummy? <laughs> and it had the mummy's face like, oh <laughs> the cummy. Did you ever watch the two thousand and 18 mummy? No. With Tom Cruise? I've never had an inkling. There's not a bone in my mind. That was like the body. star of the dark universe, and I know they went further. The one, yeah. They were like, universe. oh, hold on, this is a bad idea. No one wants this. No, I believe the first movie was um, that movie, King Arthur with Charlie Hunnam, and it had David Peckham in it. Yeah, That was, was technically that? the first, I think. Did it have the, the Iden at the start, the dark universe? I Iden? believe it did, yeah. Yeah, I believe it did. I think I think it was just a shit ass movie, and they're like, "Let's try and get more people to go watch it, and we'll say it's part of the universe." Mm. Yeah, David well, Beckham, the best actor out there. The next shit cinematic universe we have, the, the Hooniverse. <laughs> oh god, the only thing that can save it is bloody Dylan Home Williams, mate. That's it. And the war between the land and the sea. Yeah, you never fucking know the answer when it's important.